Thank you. Maybe see it. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. A man to whom God had given great mental capacity, looking back on his life, inspired by the Spirit of God, gives us a vantage point that is very valuable, worthy of our attention. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil or the unpleasant, harmful days come, not, in other words, not, not evil in the fact of sinful, but while the unpleasant days, which it says in a poetic sense, it repeats it, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Uh, this is a, a poetic way of looking at old age. The eyes dim. You are in the fall of life, not the spring of life. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, talking about the hands. And strong men shall bow themselves. Their bodies are breaking down. And the grinders, the teeth, cease because they are few. And those that look out the windows, the eyes, be darkened. And the door shall be shut in the streets. When the sound of the grinding is low, people are, don't speak up. They're not as bold in their speech. And he shall rise up with the voice of the bird, startled easy. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. The voice is not what it once was. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, they become feeble. They don't want to get up on a ladder. Or they don't want to be out climbing trees. And fear <clears throat> shall be in the way. When you feel your feebleness and your weakness, it causes you to be more fearful. And the almond trees shall flourish. This was a type, and it's in other types of ancient oriental poetry, the almond tree in its blossom state is compared to the white hair of an old man. So, the almond tree in its full blossom, fully white, is the hoary head. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. The grasshopper being denoting something small. Little things become big burdens. That which was little becomes burdensome to them. And desire shall fail. Many of the tastes, the desires, the ambitions, the vision fails. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, which many believe is speaking of the, the spinal cord, the nervous system. Or the golden bowl, the cranial, the mind be broken. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, the heart, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Talking about the functions of the body in a poetic manner. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. The theme there is everything under the sun. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. In other words, he didn't allow the futility and the vanity of life to totally discourage him. He realized there was still purpose in teaching people wisdom so that the young could come to this end in a good way. He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are his goads and his nails, fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of this flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Every matter. Every theological book 
every sermon, every Bible study, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, into court. You have a court date with every secret thing. God has the best CIA there is. He has recorded all of the thoughts and intents of your heart. It's going to go to court someday, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's a powerful chapter. So I have a question this morning. Are you planning your funeral? At that funeral, when your dust is going to return to the earth, there's going to be one overriding question, and that question will also deal with your court date. What is my legacy? The legacy, leg, the definition of legacy is basically, it's used as far as an inheritance, but it means more than that. It's the story of one's life. The things they did, the places they went, the goals they pursued, their failures, their values, their ethics and beliefs. Legacy is something that a person leaves behind to be remembered by, and your legacy is what you have left on planet Earth when you're gone. <coughs> Do you think that's something worth planning? What you're going to be remembered for? The impact you will have had on the planet. The impact you will have had on those left behind. Is that what causes you to plan your week and your day? <clears throat> you know, the rich man and Lazarus both had a funeral. I wonder what the preacher said. The rich man in Luke 12, 20, who was building bigger barns to bestow all of his goods. I wonder what the preacher said at his funeral. God said, thou fool. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. And then, basically, what legacy have you left? What is your legacy? What ethics? What values? What example? What have you left to those brothers, sisters, mother, father, sons, daughters, whoever it might be? Your community. Well, if we were to walk through Truth Cemetery, I wonder what tombstones we would read. You know, what people put on their tombstone or what the family puts on the tombstone is meant to honor the dead and it's appropriate. But in Truth Cemetery, they just say the truth. Well, here we walk through and we see <coughs> Miss Jezebel. She worked very hard to gain power and worship and men's attention. As we walk along, we see Mrs. Mouth. Had plenty of energy for talking about herself and others, but little for housekeeping and serving God. We walk along, we see Mr. Rich Man. Oh, he was the one in Luke 12, 20. God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Here's Miss Slim. Had plenty of enthusiasm for self-glory, but little for the glory of God. We're walking through Truth Cemetery. Oh, here's Mrs. Know-It-All. Her husband couldn't do anything right. What legacy she left. Here's Mrs. Manipulator. She always got her way. Here's Mr. Cowboy. He was only lacking the cow. Here's Mr. Money. He never could find time to read the Bible or sing God's praises. Here we go along, we find Mr. Muscles. 
always shopping for human applause, but failed to gain God's. As we go along through Truth Cemetery, we find Mr. Sports. He played very hard. And then we come across to another one that says, Mr. Adventure. He didn't have time for a wife or children or church. Mr. Anti-Government. He knew all the conspiracy theories. Oh, here's one. We go along, we find Mr. Cool Dude. Tight pants, worldly hairdo, and a matching attitude. Here's Mr. Judge Not. He only judged those who lived holy. Oh, here's Mr. Center of the Universe. Was well remembered for pleasing himself and those who boosted his ego, served his cause. And a couple more tombstones here. Mr. Nice Guy. He never told anyone no. Last of all, we find Mrs. Victim. It was always somebody else's fault. So if you were buried in Truth Cemetery, what would they put on your tombstone? What would they set what would they say that you had set your affections upon? What had you pursued? Where was your labor and toil directed? What would Truth Cemetery put on your tombstone? There's a song that I wish we had the sheet music to. And uh, if someone knows how we can get the sheet music, I'd like to have it. But I thought this song was very well written. And the first time I heard it, I thought, that is that says it very well. I'm going to do an unusual thing, and I'm going to play this song for you. And I want you to listen close to it. I want you to listen in a spirit of self-reflection and honesty.
you be true. Very well put. Would you want to part? Would you want them to acknowledge your name? If you do not have a set course to a planned legacy, you will be led astray by those voices. Are you listening to me this morning? If you do not have your eyes set on a legacy that you have determined and planned and that you're shooting for, then what kind of a, a, a captain of your ship are you? Where are your sails set? If you do not have a legacy in view, then you will be led astray. That's right. We went to a funeral recently, and one thing that it was impressed on my mind was where this person started in life compared to where they ended in life and what platform they were given compared to what platform they gave their children very important to think about And I began to think where I started and where I want to end. I want to plan my funeral. You need to plan your funeral. Because if the Lord tarries, it will come. Just like the Solomon described. There will come a day when you will be the one bowed down. You will be the one whose eyes are dim. You will be the one whose voice is crackly and gone. You will be the one who is startled and fearful at small things. You will be the one who is moving into the days where there is no pleasure before your death. Sooner or later, it will be you. And what will they say at your funeral? And what will people know that's not said? So I want to plan my funeral. You know, I started at a point, and I want to compare where I started with where I hope to end. My parents gave me a better starting place than they had, so what I'm going to say is no disgrace to my parents, okay? I want to honor my parents. My parents gave me a much better foundation in life than was handed to them, all right? But where I started, I was living in the city, going to public school and a liberal Baptist church where there was easy believism, prayer, prayer, evangelism, eternal security, Calvinism, antinomianism, and a number of misconceptions about the Bible. I grew up in a home that believed, or, or where Santa Claus and Christmas heresies were okay, the Easter bunny was okay, coloring eggs and all the paganism there was okay, the tooth of fairy was spoken of, Halloween was celebrated, uh, there was public school, TV, theaters, movie stars, Elvis Presley, country western music and dress, dating, worldly books, fashion, trend clothes, jewelry, makeup, immodesty, amusement parks, public pools, mixed swimming, swimming suits, cussing, dirty jokes, tobacco, beer, and attending church when there wasn't something better to do. Now that wasn't all allowed for the children, but it was all okay for adults. I watched my dad 
And not all of it was endorsed by both parents, understand that. But I'm talking about the environment. Whether it was my mom or my dad or my church or my school. The environment. But that's not what I wish to end with. In July, it will be 37 years since I gave my life to Jesus Christ. 37 years ago, I didn't know much of what I understand now. 37 years ago, I wanted to be a good soldier. I wanted to be honest. I wanted to know truth. I wanted to defend truth. What you believe and practice today is either a product of the apostles teaching the word of God properly understood or is a product of wolves tampering with the scripture, twisting the scripture and deceiving or a combination. But I determined when I understood that, that I wanted to weed out all the wolf ideas and I wanted to find the faith once delivered to the saints. I wanted to know the Bible and its original intent, okay? I wanted to know the truth. I had a legacy in view. When I passed on, I wanted to be remembered as a soldier of Jesus Christ. I wanted to weed out error and find the truth and document it and uh, teach it and pass it on to my children. I've been working at that for 37 years. I've been building a legacy of doctrinal studies, denouncing heresy, exposing wolves, and teaching biblical Christianity. I've been working on a legacy. I'm going to continue working on that legacy. Now the question is this. I've got to stop and ask myself, okay, what if my children and friends follow me exactly? Is that going to be a good thing? What if they only follow my goals, values, and pursuits? Is that still a good thing? What if they ignored and overlooked my what I acknowledge as faults and failures, and they only followed what I was pursuing? What if your children followed what you're pursuing? Would that be good? What if your children followed what you value? What you promote? Would that be good? <laughs> so at my funeral, whatever family is there, what do I want my sons to look like? At my funeral, I want my sons to be men of God. At my funeral, I want my sons to be walking in the fear of the Lord. I don't want them to have some goopy worldly hairdo. I don't want them to be dressed in some fashion attire. I want them to look like Christians. I want them to look like conservative Christians. I want them to be men who have their eyes set on seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's what I want at my funeral. When my sons are standing around looking at my corpse, I want them to be honorable husbands, fathers, faithful, noble. I want them to have a good work ethic. I want them to be generous. I want them to be compassionate. I want them to be wise. I want them to be able to get along with one another and love one another and work together for the good of God's church and His kingdom. While my daughters are standing around looking at my casket, I hope and pray that they will be chaste, that they will be sober-minded, that they will be women of God, that they will be holy, that they will be wise, that they will be discreet, that they will be shamefaced. I hope that they will be good wives and good mothers. That they will have the love of Jesus Christ shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. 
that they will be laboring to perfect their character so that when their funeral comes, their children can rise up and call them blessed. I hope my grandchildren, who by that time could be many, the snowball effect in the next 10 years could be incredible. <laughs> um, but my grandchildren, will the faith that I sought to pass to my children have been passed to their children? Will their children know the truth? Will their children have God's Word hid in their heart? Will my granddaughters have the modesty and discretion and sobriety and shamefacedness and holiness that I tried to put in my daughters? I've seen a lot of Mennonite families where Ma and Pa were conservative, upright, godly people. And the children were okay. And the grandchildren are in sweatpants and stretch pants and, and worldly attire. And like uh, there was definitely a breakdown here somewhere. I hope and pray that I can so ingrain the fear of God and the word of God in my children that they will have enough uh, integrity to pass it on to their children. For many godly generations. At my funeral, we may have, we may add, hopefully, to this pile. God willing, there's much more to say and much more to battle. But I hope that my children will have a proper view and proper definitions of salvation, grace, law, faith, justification love, separation, that my children will recognize the error and the heresy that the devil has slipped in to Christianity. That my children will be able to articulate their faith. They will know why Marcionism is wrong and why Calvinism is wrong and why Antinomianism is wrong. They will understand what the narrow road is supposed to look like. Once a family left our church, and after a while, we had them over for dinner one night. They were, they were related. And sitting on the couch, I asked them, I said, So, you've left our teaching. Could you explain to me what the narrow road looks like now? Based on what you, you think that you found something new and better. Could you describe for me what now you see as the narrow road? You should have seen the blank look on their face. Because they weren't seeking a narrow road. It wasn't, they didn't leave because they had greater light. And now the narrow road is this. They could have shared that with me. If they were right and I was wrong, wouldn't that be the loving thing to do? To share with me, well, we now see the narrow road as this. Because the Bible says such and such. I was ready to discuss it. I was ready to learn something. But they just stared like a cow looking at a new gate. Because that wasn't in the mix. That wasn't in the program that they were pursuing. I want my children to have a good comprehension of the faith once delivered to the saints. That kicks out Joseph Smith. That was written in the first century. He wasn't there. I want my children to understand the true church order and program. Program that Jesus Christ ordained and set up and his, his apostles implemented in the first century. Amen. I want my children and my grandchildren to have helps and guidelines acquainted with godly commentators like uh, Adam Clark. I didn't know anything about Adam Clark when I first gave my life to Christ. I want my children to be connected with the proper helps 
and have answers to a lot of the questions. I want them to remember a home, imperfect as it was, a home where they were serving God at all costs. The house they grew up in was a ministry station. I want them to remember serving Jesus for Jesus' sake and the salvation of uh, people's souls and serving families, serving people, giving and helping and leading. Even if they turned around and stabbed you in the back. I want them to remember family Bible time. A regular event in our home. I want them to remember being taught how to work hard. Good, honest day's work. Work hard with their hands. Taught skills. Taught how to make a living. I want them to remember a home where we labored for a good testimony. If by chance we could bring someone to God. <clears throat> Have you planned your funeral? You need to sit down and plan your funeral. What are they? You know what? You may not get to the point where the grinders are few. You may not get to the point where the, those who look out at the windows become dim. You may not get there. You could have an accident. Things can happen and young people can die young. Middle-aged people can die middle-aged. Have you planned your funeral? What are they going to say about you, young person, if suddenly you were gone? What is the legacy that you have left in all the minds and hearts of those around you. What will be the hole? You're going to leave a hole. There's going to be a gap where you were. It's not going to be filled anymore. You're going to be gone. What hole will you leave? What would truth put on your tombstone? What would Truth Cemetery write down for you? If you live to adulthood, what do you plan to leave your children and your friends and society? The question will be brought up. It will be spoken about where you started. What did, what did the baton look like when it was handed to you? And what does it look like when you hand it off? <clears throat> The Apostle Paul told Timothy to be a good soldier. He said, And the things that thou, that, that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You as a disciple of Jesus Christ, the definition of a disciple in Jewish thinking was one who thoroughly learned the teachings of a rabbi, a master, a doctor, a teacher. And th so learned that rabbi's wisdom and knowledge and all that he had compiled in his mind, he transferred to the disciple so that when he was gone, it would not be lost and it could be transferred to the next generation, unchanged, preserved. Are you going to give your children more than you were given? Did you or will you end closer to God's perfection than you began? Will the world be better off for you having been here? Will you have been faithful to the truth God brought your way? You know, the Lord is shining truth and giving people opportunities. Oftentimes, a turning point in my life was due to a track I read. Or a little pamphlet that came in the mail. 
that I sit down and read, honestly evaluated, don't know who it came from, or an argument I had witnessing to somebody and conversing about doctrine and going away thinking they made a good point. What am I going to do with that point? Oh yeah, I, I may have felt like I put a, I, I won the argument. There was a number of times where I won the argument and at the same time I knew that they had made a point. And if they had pressed that point, I don't have an answer for that point. I'm glad they didn't press it because that would have been bad. <laughs> but I recognize that they made a point that I couldn't answer. And I need to find an answer for that point. Either they're right or there is an answer for that point. And I need to know. Because I want to be right. I want to know the truth. If I'm wrong, I want to know it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brother Mark, you think you're always right. But you're not going to take the time to help me out of that, are you? Are you going to write a book? Are you going to write? Are you going to sit down where you think I'm wrong and write out your position thoroughly and give it to me? If you're not, then all you want to do is complain. All you want to do is jab. Okay? If you have a problem with something I believe, then you are obligated to do what I have done for you. You are obligated to get the scriptures out, line it all up, document it, and give it to me, and converse with me over it, so you can correct me. If you don't care to do that, then all you're wanting to do is avoid the truth that I have brought your way. Were you faithful to the truth God brought your way? Let me ask you this. Will you be looking forward to Judgment Day? When your time draws near. I told someone, someone emailed me just yesterday or the day before. And uh, telling me I needed to repent. When in reality they do. And I told them. I said that we were talking about Judgment Day. I told them I long for Judgment Day. I'm looking forward to it. I'm praying for it. I'm hoping it comes soon. Not because I think I'm perfect. Not because I think I'm wonderful. But I am committed to truth. And Judgment Day will vindicate truth. And that's the joy of my heart knowing someday truth will be vindicated. The Lord will be vindicated. His word will be vindicated. And I can't wait. I can't wait. Even if I receive correction or rebuke. I'm committed to truth. I want to know the truth. And I can't wait until the Lord says, This is the truth. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to Judgment Day. Let it come. Bring it on. Even, even so, come Lord Jesus. Because I am so sick of all the lies and hypocrisy and twisting and dishonesty. It would be so wonderful when the Lord pulls the curtain back and exposes the truth. Vindicates the truth. <coughs> Avenges Jesus' character and His Word. Now, I've, one more thing and we're going to close. Lucifer really wants to help you plan your legacy. He is in the business of helping people plan their legacy. The Lord Jesus is also in the business of helping people plan their legacy. And He would like to help you plan your legacy. Design it. Okay? They both have what they believe to be great uh, templates and formats and great helps when it comes to designing your legacy. Now, one thing you need to understand is this. Now listen close. One of them will plan your legacy. One of them will design your legacy. And you are choosing which one. One of the two will design and plan and uh, orchestrate and facilitate and help you get it all on. One of them will help you 
design your legacy. And you will choose which one. Mm -hmm. Let's stand together. I have a legacy in view. If I keep my eyes on the plan, on the legacy that the Lord has help me to envision okay a legacy that is biblical a legacy that is glorifying to God a legacy that I will be happy for God to implement if I keep my eyes on that legacy it will keep me from failure now do you have your eyes on a legacy? Are you planning a legacy? If you do not have in your mind a desired legacy that you have envisioned, that the Lord is helping you design, that, that is in your view, that you are shooting for, then you're like a ship Tossed on the water with no purpose. Driven of every wind that comes along. Back and forth. This wind, that wind. And you are not being productive. And you are very likely to be led astray by the voices that are calling to you. There are many voices calling. And it's like this. The Lord has one voice. The devil has any other voice that he can round up. Because all he cares about is you not following the one. He doesn't care which one you follow. You can follow the voice of false piety. You can follow the voice of false doctrine. You can follow the voice of iniquity. You can follow the voice of worldly wise man and worldly wise woman. You can follow any voice you want to. He has a whole portfolio of voices for you to follow. God has one. Either you're going to set your compass and tune in your mind to that one voice and plan your funeral based on that one voice, or you will, you will have a legacy based on another voice. <clears throat> Have you ever sat down and planned your funeral? You need to do that. You need to sit down and you need to plan. You need to line it out. What your legacy is going to be. Or you're not ready to live next week. You're not ready to live tomorrow. Because you don't know where you're headed. You don't know what you're doing. You are taking it moment by moment. That's not action, that's reaction. You're not living according to principle unless you have determined what legacy you want to leave behind. Anyone have a thought to share before we close? I don't want you to forget what I've said. <coughs> How many of you will promise me that before the day's over, you'll at least sit down and give a few minutes to planning your funeral? I hope so. If you're not, the devil's going to do it for you. If you don't plan it according to the Word of God, he'll do it for you. And someday when you get there, God's going to remind you of this sermon. You're going to be draw you're going to be taken into court. There's going to be a court date. It's all going to be brought up and you'll be reminded of every opportunity that God, every time that God's voice called. <laughs> every time God's voice called and you chose another voice. God's going to walk you through it thoroughly. Believe me, folks. I'm not telling you fables and fairy tales. This is reality. Okay? This is, this is the most serious thing that you can think of in your life. Right. 
Someday I won't be here. Someday I will be gone. And I will have left something behind. And so will it be with you. Any thoughts before we pray?